Hi and welcome to the Data Video CG200 training. My name is Tim and in this lesson we will be building a lower third using only the CG200 software. And this is the lower third we will be creating. So to begin, we will start by clicking on the preview monitor, see what we're doing. And when we play this one down here, here's what it'll look like comes up and make the ticker and I can end it that's how it goes out okay so to build this what we do is we go with new you can either click on this icon go to the file menu new or right here's a little um, shortcut key control N new okay when you get to this new screen you simply right click on here and go to add simple object left click and here's the object it adds. And it adds a little bit of opaqueness to it so you can see it. Otherwise, it would just be completely transparent. And so you just drag that into position. Mm, let's say right about there. And then we'll just scale it. Right here are the handles. And just scale it how you want it. I'm going to and drag this one all the way across. Okay, and that's where it is. And then uh, what I want to do is change the color so it's not like this. So I can see it a little easier because this makes it kind of hard to see. And I can right click on it or you can go over here. But I like to right click and see the properties here. And I can take this to 100% transparent, which would be you, you won't be able to tell the difference between the background and the object to zero. So, but I'm going to change that over to. Uh, it's like 70% maybe. I oh, will see. Maybe. Uh, and then the color here. So we'll go to, hmm, this is the one that I have, is a 21. And you can choose any color that you want. So this one that I had chosen. And then go. I can add it to custom color, and then it'll come down here. OK, and then it comes over there. Just like that. A little bit lighter than what I wanted. So right here, you can change it into this one, too. Add a little darker. See what you like. Uh, so here's one of them. Now I'll create another object for down below. Add a simple object. Drag that one down into position. Again, size it accordingly. So let me bring this one over here just a tad, like that. And now, if you see that, you see a little bit. This one's on top. This is object number two, and you can see a little bit of a line on top of here. Um, I want to make this one actually zero, so I can see it. This one right here, I'm going to do it a little different. Um, so you can right-click on this one, go to your properties again. Click on your color. I click on this one first, so when I want to add it to custom color, it will fill in that one. And then I can use the same colors again. So I can define custom colors. And I can choose another value here. In this case, it's 61, 103. And then it'll fill that one in, so my two colors are there. And so. right okay now you see this I don't I want this one actually behind this one and to do that you click on the object and then up here there are some icons and you can move that object to the back so it's all in layers so move to the back and then it goes behind this object so now this object here is number two and this one is one one being the one that's that closest to the to the background okay so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the same color here I just want to make it a little smaller so I can click on it and you can go up to the edit, or you can just simply put Control C. So I can go Control C, and then Control V is the shortcut for paste, and I Control V. I can see it got a little darker because now there's actually two objects there. One's layered on top of the other. 
So you click on it and just drag it up into position. And you just scale it kind of how you want it. So I'm going to have this one be my, this one here would be my web page information. And I want to move this one also to the back. So click on it. And then you would move it to the back. You move it. So now it's to the back. Now this one here is in the front of every one of them. This is the darkest one. OK. So now I want to also create another object down here. So to do that, we just click on this one. This is the closest one to that scale. And again, Control C, Control V to paste it. See, it gets a little darker. And just drag that one into position. And I'm going to take it here and then scale it. Grab the handle there. Scale it over like this. It's a little bit larger than that. So now it's two, two different objects. So I'm going to change this one to a white. Like that. And there, and that's zero. So then I have that one there. And I think this one actually could you know, about there. So and now I want to put a, a picture here, my logo, as you can see right here. So by doing this, well, all you have to do is you right click. And instead of add a simple object, you add a picture slash animation. So let's do that. And this comes up here. So I'm going to select this one here. Open, and there it is. I can move that one down into position. And as you can see, I have to scale these back a little further, which shouldn't be a problem. But this layer is on top of that one. So let me show you what we'll do here. OK, so when you have this and you try to scale it, you're always going to select this line on top. It, it gets very frustrating. So what you have to do is either move this one out and then reposition it. Say, so I'll move one back. And you have the same problem there. So that's why I'll move this one out a little bit and then scale this one back here. Like that, and a little bit too. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that might be still a little bit. And then move this one down into position, like that. So something to keep in mind, though, when you bring in pictures, images into the data video CG two hundred. So I bring this picture in. This is how it, the aspect is, and data video does not lack, does not um, lock your aspect ratio. In other words, if I were to try to scale it, and even if I grab the corner handle here, I can move the mouse a little bit to the left, and it will actually scrunch it. And it becomes very frustrating, because you never know if you have the correct aspect. And so you're, you're maybe a little stretched, scrunched, and all those kind of things. And this process can be quite frustrating. And so what I would recommend you do is to scale it in something like Photoshop first and scale it accordingly and then bring it into the data video. The data video CG100 is terrible for scaling. So I'll just delete that one because I don't know exactly where it's supposed to be. And then say yes, and then right click again and go to add picture animation. And pick the logo again, comes in properly, and move that into the position, and there we have it. The logo is into position then. So now what we want to do is you want to add some. And also, I, I think this is a little off here, so I'm going to move it up a little bit. You can push the arrow button, and it will move it up one pixel at a time. That looks a little better. So anyways, now I want to add some text to my lower third. To do that, you click on the object, and you can right click and say Edit Text. OK, so and I'll just type in CG dash 200 lower third. Enter, and it'll go on to another line. And I'll say creating lower third using only the CG200 software. OK, and then click off of it. Don't push Enter. It's just going to add another line to it. And then you have it here. It's kind of tucked up there, which I don't really want. So what you can do is, once you click on it, edit text, 
highlight at all. It's hard to see with this blue, but it is highlighted. And then we can come up to this little guy right here, which is the paragraph properties. And then so this little box comes up. So our left alignment is what we have. Uh, let's maybe make this into maybe a 20 left. And our top margin, how about a 10? Let's see what that does. That puts it like that. And it gives us a little bit of edge on that. Let's edit the text again. And let's highlight this lower one. And let's say not a 28, but 26. Put our lower one there. And this upper one here, highlight that. And we'll say uh, 32. Hmm, something like that. I'm just using the standard Arial font on this. You can use whatever font you want. I do recommend using something that's real legible, nothing too stylized. It's very hard for your viewers to view something that's too stylized. So a good block font or Futura can be good. Arial is good. There are other fonts too that are better. Um, so once you have that done, you can do the same thing to your other one. You just click on it, right click, edit text, and I'll just say www.imagepictures.net. Click off of it. Again, I don't like the way that's, that looks. Too close to the edge. I'm going to click on the paragraph properties, and I'm going to go with a 20, and let's go with uh, 15. No, that was about 10. I think 10 by pretty sufficient. Yeah, that might be a little much yet. I'm going to click on that again and edit that. Mm, let's go six. A little better. So then I have that into position. Next, I want to add this one. You can continue to do this through each training. Now, it's white because I have a white background, so I have to highlight it. And you can see it's there, training. But in order to edit the font, the color, you come up over here to the font properties, the, font, the color, and the background color. So we can go to color, choose a black if you want a black. But I don't really want a black, actually. What I wanted to do is use my custom color down here. Okay, it's there. So then I have my custom color there, like that. And again, though, this has to be pushed over more, so it's aligned with that one there. And I believe I used a 20. Could be wrong. No, it looks good. It's right there. So now it's on that edge there. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to put a ticker into this box right here into the lower third. To do that, click on the box, you right click, and once again, go to edit text. Now, you can either type something in that you want, or what I did is I took something from Word and I just copied it and I'm gonna paste it right into this. So I push control V, shortcut key to paste, and there it is. Now, you don't see it, but if you look closely, you'll see a very tiny text because what the CG200 does is it copies the formatting of the text into Word, does not keep the formatting in your text box. It copies right over it. Very frustrating, especially when you're doing a lot of graphics and you're copying from Word. Maybe your producer is giving you these graphics to put in and you got just copying and pasting and you're constantly re reformatting. It can be one of the most frustrating things. Why it doesn't keep the um, formatting in, in the um, CG200 is beyond me, but regardless, so you have to go in here and actually edit the text. So you click on it, edit your text. Control A is the shortcut key for select all. You select it, and then what we do is we can go to our front uh, properties. Click on that, and let's select this. Um, let's just make an aerial. A lot of fonts in here. Okay, so we have an Arial here, and let's just go to regular, and let's say 20. And we go to OK. Well, you know what? It's still black, so of course we have to edit our text. Control A, select all, font properties, and let's make it white. I'd like to make it bold as well. Make it a 22 there. So we got it like this. And what we also, the reason it's doing this is because we have not defined it to be a scrolling text yet. So to do that, we would go over to, let me pull this open a little bit more, like right here, 
and you see the tax it says transparent zero movement is fixed well we're going to change this to a horizontal scroll horizontal scroll and let's have it move fast and we'll have a loop See, since this was on top of there, just pull it back down. I'm going to edit my text, Control A. I'm going to check this here. And I do want to get the top just a little bit. Let's just say uh, five for the top. There, that will center that up a little more. So now when we click on this, our, we can either click on this, right click and go to play, or we can click up here. These group of buttons are just for individual object controls. So if I hit play, you'll see it come up like this, how it's going to come up when you are in production. So right here we can pause it, play it, or end it, stop it, regardless. So that right there is how we created it. So now when I push play, and play all I mean play every object on this page. It'll play it like that. And we can pause it or end up, sorry. Play it, pause it, and the only thing that's actually playing is this. So you click it again and it'll just continue to to play through. So we can end it. But we don't actually have it animating in or out. So on the next lesson, I will show you how to animate the objects in and out. So you can play it, it'll come up, it'll animate in, and then when you end it, it'll animate out.